Welcome to the Safety Third Podcast. I'm William. Today is a very special episode because we're still in Japan. <laughs> I kind of want to talk about what happened last night. I don't. Why not? No. We can. Uh, we we were picked up by some uh, gaijin hantas mm-hmm. in the bar. <laughs> <laughs> it, was, it, was, it was frankly an incredible experience. <laughs> <laughs> some girls, some girls really wanted to get to know us, and, and teach, I think teach we them were, English. Yeah, I think we were able to cross some cultural yes. boundaries. Actually, it's amazing how Watashi wa Mista Hamburger Son. <laughs> it really breaks the ice. The little, the small amount of Japanese we learned helped us tremendously yesterday. <laughs> but did it help us? No. <laughs> It definitely made us stand out as gaijin, and I think that's exactly what what they were looking for. What did it help us do? Uh, What did we accomplish? I I had a great night last night. I guess that's true. We accomplished that. We made new friends. We learned nothing. Yes. Yes. Nothing. And we got drunk. Yeah. So every all the good things put together. Not learning, getting drunk, meeting new people. Yeah. It was a very interesting experience. It made me appreciate this trip even more i think it, it makes me really realize how important it is to have a like a woman in the group because yes. the oh, yeah. entire reason any of this started can you hear my voice right now like this yeah, what happened <laughs> Wait, yeah. what? i was just screaming <laughs> <laughs> so, it was me and uh sandra i say sandra, she sandra. Her videos. yeah, yeah. Me, and, me and sandra we were we were playing giant jenga and uh just just the act of speaking english and doing that we attracted the attention of some girls and it just snowballed from there. It's it's really intimidating talking to people that speak like that you don't have any like language connection with. I, I so, thought it was fine. No, no, no. I'm saying that that's why I appreciate the experience so much uh, is because no. I it it takes a lot of confidence to just start talking to somebody that you know you're gonna struggle to talk. Especially to. on their part, the fact that they could like essentially mm. be trying to pick us up. Can you imagine trying to pick someone up and not speaking their fucking language? That. Yeah, Takes is balls. admirable. These girls had huge balls. They had enormous <laughs> goblin energy. It was actually yeah. incredible. Okay. They, we were playing. Oki. We were playing Oki. giant Jenga. Oki goblin energy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and what the uh, Atsuki, like the main girl, she like you're name dropping her. I've oh, never, name dropping. I've never Atsuki. met a. A Jenga shark before she <laughs> yeah. she pulled out she pulled out a piece that was so clearly like going to make the tower fall that Kevin you like caught the tower yeah I held the tower because I'm like I saw it wobbling and it was about to fall and I held it and I was gonna be like oh you suck and then <laughs> she yeah like, she was like she was like mm, like get your hand <laughs> off that yeah and, then <laughs> and I lift it up and it doesn't fall and she's like. <laughs> I knew what she was saying, especially she pulled out one of these. Yeah. Oh my god, they, actually, they, they flipped us off the entire time. A lot of fuck a you. A lot fuck of fuck you. you. Yeah, they did say that a lot. <laughs> I'm not really sure why half the time they said that, though. I, I think it's just universal. <laughs> yeah. No, but they were just like doing that for no reason. <laughs> fuck you. Fuck you. <laughs> there was a reason. It's because we no. beat them in Jenga a lot. Yeah. yeah. That's the exact yeah. reason why we say Mista Hapai. Yeah. That's yeah. the words that they know. <laughs> and there's a joy in using the words that you know. Like, we're trying our best to speak Japanese, but the only phrase we know is, I am Mr. Hamburger. <laughs> but they they ran with it, and then they said, I am Hamburger Sista. Hamburger Sista. Hamburger Sista. Hamburger Sista. It was really a truly magical experience. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it a lot. Because otherwise you just kind of get stuck in like a little bit of a bubble. Yeah, yeah. Where it's just, you know, other people who speak English. Yeah, I think going to darts was a really good choice. I think that was, that's like, uh, who, found, who found that? Was that Reggie? Who Kevin, found that bar? Kevin. Kevin. Kevin yeah, because Reggie and I went to go play darts <clears> another day. And we were like, oh, this is awesome. This is what people do locally is darts. I, I just don't have any confidence like going around by myself doing stuff mm-hmm. like even when we went uh so we left the house and we went to uh takashita street and to get more of the uh, capsules which i i actually want to show off one of my capsules oh, right then- <laughs> I don't know if you can see this how close is it can you see it mm-hmm. this is a uh a tempura deep fried bulldozer <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> That, that, uh, yep, that's it. <laughs> there, it. There's a vending machine in Don Takashita Street that sells deep fried construction equipment. <laughs> oh, you, I got a deep fried uh, excavator. You got a deep fried excavator. <laughs> <laughs> you guys bought it though. Yeah. yeah so yeah. there's a market. It's like there's, they had a batch of broken molds and they were trying yeah. to like recoup their yeah. losses. That's yeah. really what I think. Because there's <laughs> right next to it, or in the same uh, uh, building, there is regular construction <laughs> equipment. And I, I didn't want that one. 
I wanted the deep fried construction equipment. I got like a little x-ray machine too, like an airport x-ray machine and a, a sushi plate lunch. <laughs> but we went, we went down to Takashita Street and then I went and had dinner with um, a kind of small YouTuber, Japanese guy. Mm. And then you guys went to a museum. But after that, like when I was done, you know, like hanging out with this guy for dinner, I just had to wander around and wait for you guys to finish. It's oh, yeah. kind of terrifying walking yeah. around and having to like pick a place and like, you know, I don't know. It's oh, just, just entirely. Yeah. On you feel own. like a complete yeah. outsider. Yes. And it's like, you know, it's like, oh, I'm going to go to this place and then I have to figure out how to like struggle yeah. my way through ordering something or if it's like full and you have to wait and you have to like communicate like, you know, it's just there's something it's like it's not hard. It's just very like I think. When you're with people and you're confused, it's kind of funny. Yes. But when you're alone, you just feel kind of like it's useless. Bit, yeah, it's exactly. I don't. I feel like it's easier to be alone and to blend in. I feel like it's well, way... I, yeah. I think we'll say like... It's in, less stressful. Well, actually. Interact with I think people. it's like interacting with a waiter. Like, so you get a menu that has no English. And like, you're trying to figure it out. It's like, at least when we choose something wrong or something happens, like we laugh among ourselves. Like when you're alone, you're kind of just like... No, nah, no, I feel like... Yeah. I'm not saying, I'm not saying it's bad. That. I'm just saying I feel like there is... <clears throat> That, but what if the, what if these like people that I'm harder. never gonna see again laugh at me? <laughs> that you'd kill yourself. <laughs> it's it not, was a long. We got back at like three in the morning. It was a long night. It was great. It was it was excellent. I was, I I feel like going alone. Um, there's something there's something about like being. I feel like passably because it's like you know i think if you look close it's pretty clear like i'm chinese right no. if you look close it's so it's no, like, i think it's so nose, but it's like someone I has to examine if you. you're just walking around i feel like i like as long as i'm not saying or doing anything like too out of the ordinary it does feel like i can kind of just blend in so if you're on yeah your so what you're saying is like on the in the range of blending yeah will and kevin are like <clears throat> far away yeah but even you're then closer, I, I think i and think i'm like a bit i think you could too yeah Sandra keeps thinking that other Japanese people are you, so I think... <laughs> Probably from behind. <laughs> we saw Japanese well. Kevin the other day. Who oh, we with? did. Yeah? We, from behind at the... Was it, it the train station? I think so. Yeah, I think it we were in Osaka. Like we we saw a guy who was wearing like kind of like a Hawaiian-ish looking shirt and like the shorts. He's and he a was doppelganger like, from behind. Really okay. skinny, so like even like the small clothes were baggy on him. We're like, that <laughs> is Japanese That's... Kevin. <laughs> He was like tall and gangly. It was Japanese. He, he, he was tall yeah. and disgusting. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Your description of Kevin is honestly what? kind gangly of offensive. Gangly is not bad. Gangly is not bad. There's nothing wrong yeah. with gangly. It looks like he had like some bone disease. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just the way you described it was definitely not was, flattering. Was the ugliest piece of shit I've like, ever seen. Like, you know what? That looks a little like bit Kevin. Why was the doctor on me? Like, oh, okay. left alone. oh, yeah? Yeah, you're like, yeah, okay, that's awesome. <laughs> He had these really ugly teeth sticking out of his face. Yeah. <laughs> and we were like, yep, that's like you. Him. That's Kevin. He had a really <laughs> flat ass. Yeah. He did actually, though. Yeah. Seriously, he did. Hey, it comes, it comes with the territory. <laughs> <laughs> this is cyberbullying. <laughs> how, much, how much effort do you think it would take for us to all find like a Japanese doppelganger and then just have them sit here for a bit for the podcast? It probably, probably not that much effort. <laughs> You put out like a call, like a casting call. That would be funny. like like the Simpsons episodes. Like the beginning is like always a little bit different of a Simpsons. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I I just it made me realize that I think I have like a, a slightly unhealthy fear of failure. Huh. Huh. And that would probably be a good thing to like slightly. Slightly. <laughs> just like with your, with your like just overall huh. interactions yeah. and stuff that you don't want to do them wrong. Like incorrectly. Yes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I like uh, vending machines, right? Can't really get those because you can't. Right. They, you can't fail. You can't. I did actually a few times. I clicked the wrong button. <laughs> well, that's in, that's <laughs> just in, incompetent. And then I'm terrified. I clicked the wrong button and got mad that the machine gave me the wrong drink. And, and Nara was like, "I watched you <laughs> the wrong button. And I thought you were just choosing a different drink." You're like raging at the machine. No, I was just like, what? you're giving the wrong thing. I was like, How's that? I'm gonna like, what number? I can call and complain. Like, it's a joke. It's like, you just hit the wrong button. I like, when you guys are walking back from the museum to uh, wherever we were, mm -hmm. I, I was like trying to find food and I said, screw it. And I just went to the 7 Eleven and got the, uh, <laughs> That's the, the, the yeah. Pokemon donut. Well, no, oh, yeah, and, no. I, and, I, and I was like, <laughs> jelly filled yeah. Pokemon. And I'm just like, damn it. <laughs> No, I, I feel like that kind of represents like, a lot of like habits in general, where it's like, 
I, I think I'm assuming what you're saying is like it's hard to veer. You, like Seven Eleven's tried and true. Yes, it's like it I works. know you I know, know how, how to do it. it. I know how to navigate it. Whereas like you go and look at a place that's like, like kind of full and it's just like oh, there's God, like this do extra. I wanna... Yeah, but I think that like that goes for the same for even like just making YouTube videos, just like day to day life stuff. It's like the moment there's like a little bit of like makes it harder. You mm -hmm. kind of like veer towards the easy path. Yeah, mm -hmm. the comfortable path. Yeah, exactly. Right. I mean, we 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 just went to a Coco Curry last night. It's mm -hmm. like a, it's like a That's chain Japanese oh, it curry. So good. It was pretty. I think that was your first time having Japanese curry. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean that was pretty good. Even still, though, even though like Reg, beer all Reggie it. like ended up spilling an entire thing of beer on the floor and then I'm, like knocked my something pants. into a sink. And then <laughs> oh yeah, and, and then like the, the water just kept going because <laughs> yeah. it was like the proximity thing. <laughs> it was such like it was it was about as bad as it gets, and it was still totally fine. Yeah, it was yeah. fine. Yeah, like we taught him how to say sorry, and he said sorry, and they it's were like, very, he, like he he told me what happened was he spilled it, and he was mm -hmm. like, oh my god, like I just like desecrated their culture, like because it's so clean, right? So to make it all. Like, Mm -hmm, yeah. And he didn't come with anything to clean it up. They kind of just it left just, it there they, while we were yeah, sitting there. Yeah. So he was like freaking out. So then he's trying to clean it up. But then he's like, he turns around and like in his haste, like knocks the bottle over, which and then yeah. the water yeah. goes. Yeah. And yeah. And it's like just the, the whole room's like falling <laughs> apart. Well, I was just eating curry the whole yeah. time. Like, yeah. just, like something, there was a commotion kind of to my left. And I just was like eating my curry. I feel like that's the way the Japanese do yeah. it too. <laughs> you know? I'm like, I don't know these guys. <laughs> They they have a lot of like individual restaurants here though with the uh, it's, like it's not the separated. vending machine it's like the ticket machine where it's, oh, yeah because yeah, yeah, yeah. it's it's like I feel like there's maybe something similar with not wanting to interact with mm -hmm. people here mm -hmm. even though they can do it where I feel like with right. us it's much harder or it's like it's you like, order on your phone and you click like you know yeah, well, what you, you want you send the order and like bring there's you the a, like a kiosk like, in front of the restaurant right on the inside that has a oh, bunch yeah. of items and you put money in. You select yeah. what you want. It gives you change. You take the ticket to the back and you give it to them and they make it and bring it to you. And it's like a lot of like single seats where yes. it's yeah. like a, like a, it's a, like a bar, it's totally a booth, like but there's, there's like a yeah. picture of water and in there's there. guides, there's, like yeah. there's, there's a barrier between each yeah. seat and it's not even like a COVID thing. It's just straight up a, a don't Has look Has it always been thing. like that? Yeah. A lot yeah, of them. I, I, I kind of like it. It's the same energy as like Uber driver didn't say anything five out of five. Yes. You know, like I think everyone has a little bit of that, like, like that social friction of like, a thing where there's like not like you, you're just trying to get somewhere you're just trying to eat mm -hmm. and i don't want to go so, through a just, struggle it just so like, happens that a person is involved and you don't really want to deal i, with I it. think it could be too like at least i know back home going to a fast food restaurant mm -hmm. is like fine but it's like if you go and sit down at like some sit down restaurant and it's like some of them are like they're always for two people like it's not that common that one guy or one person just sits down and has like a meal at a sit down restaurant mm. so some people feel awkward about it and sure, like, sure, sure. so yeah. it's like having these single boots, you can have like sit down food, mm -hmm. but you don't have to like feel weird yeah. about eating a lot. Mm, yeah. And it actually feels like it's encouraged because of it's like the partial yeah. single seats. Yeah. Like I meant to eat alone. I definitely back home. I will just eat bad, like easy food mm -hmm. before going out and getting something mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. it takes a lot for me to get out of the house by myself right. yeah. to get food if i'm with other people like i'll do it's anything easy. and everything all day but at <laughs> home it's like i will literally eat just like like frozen food or yeah, yeah. soylent or whatever because well, it's so much harder back home to like go out and get food here it's you walk five like yeah. five, not even minutes. Yeah, we have stuff. That's yeah, like it's like five steps, yeah. and there's like there's like four right restaurants now. like yeah. right on this. It, block. it reminds me of like Manhattan, like New York. Mm. Have you guys ever been there? Yeah, it's like, like you're you're always like a block away from a subway station, and like yeah. on every corner there's like a, a cart mm -hmm. selling like halal food or a yeah. hot dog. Like, mm. yeah. like kind of like all your immediate needs are within like a very short walk of wherever yeah. you are in the city. Yeah, I remember we were filming something with uh, Binging with Babish, and he was in Manhattan, I, I think. I don't really remember, but mm -hmm. he was basically in the big city. Yeah, yeah. And we needed super glue. And I just walked down the street one block away. There's a little hardware store, got super glue, went mm -hmm. back. And I was like, oh, that, that's awesome. Like being able to just walk out and not have to get in a car. Like, and can drive. you imagine trying to do something like that, like at the, uh, the, that the old house on Shannon? Because I'm so used to saying yeah. Shannon house. Yeah, right? yeah. Like, no, it, like, no. We never yeah. left that stupid house. Because <laughs> it's like, just to leave the neighborhood. Yeah, it's like five minutes. It was it was, it was like five three minutes. quarters of a mile, I think, to get out of the neighborhood. Mm -hmm. And it was, it was all like winding, yeah, like winding, like on a mountain. Yeah. Well, they weren't one way. They were as wide as a car, but they were two way. Yeah. So it's like if someone pulls up, you can sometimes way. like have to like shimmy around. It was people. horrible. But then you want to, if you want to get closer to anything in LA, it's you get like 
too close to like cars and it's yeah. a nightmare and it's it's not even i feel like even if you're in down like like in the middle of downtown la i do not think you would have your sort of like needs met in the same no way. it's just no. not laid out for that yeah, yeah. tokyo is actually like what every city wishes it was it's <laughs> it is it is almost like cartoonishly functional like walking back so what we we, we three in the morning what time we, i don't remember <laughs> he was about three, we got three? we got here oh, about so three, then we so may have left it too yeah. yeah and we're at one point underneath like a huge overpass that is either like a highway or like train rails mm. and there's there's like like a whole bike kind of park like locking setup and it just was like if i was under a big kind of bridge like that in my hometown or in Los Angeles, like, I, you wouldn't feel. Oh good yeah, about it. I, you would oh, not no. feel comfortable, and you would avoid it because that kind of like, I don't know, like covered area. Just Somebody's in the shadows. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 <laughs> it's like sh super shady people. It's always really disgusting mm -hmm. and unkept. It's not used effectively. It's just like, just not. And it it felt like kind of Disneyland esque of like, oh, this is what somebody <laughs> yes. thinks the city is gonna be like. Yeah. You know, and then and except it actually except is. It actually yeah. is. That's like, what I've always found. Like I tell people when I, I mean, because I went to Japan before, it's like I don't know how to describe it. You just don't feel in danger. Mm -mm. Like you're, yeah. and Canada because we're the danger. I, you know, yeah, yeah. Danger. I would say Canada, like in Montreal, I also generally don't feel unsafe at night, depending on mo like for most part, depending on where you are. But the moment I go to places like New York. LA. So yeah, walk American, around LA and I, there was um do you remember cities, when, when was like the time that. when we were hanging out? Remember my friend Carson? Mm. I think we were like walking around downtown. I forget what that was for. But like do you remember just like the entire vibe that whole yeah. time where like oh, it's horrible. Just, like There's people just, just like, like crossing yeah. the streets and you're just like who you're are constantly like corner yeah. of your eye, like yeah. looking at people, <laughs> like trying to figure out if they're like looking at you like or stalking you or whatever is going on. LA but, sucks. I don't know <laughs> how to describe it. It's like Sometimes people aren't overtly doing anything. It's just like subtle things. What's well, where it's like suspicious behavior, but all around you. <laughs> I mean, even because at one point, like uh, like our friend Reggie, he misplaced his phone. He thought mm. it was pickpocketed. And he was we're like, like pickpocketed my phone. Some pickpocketed. And like Nigel points out, he's like, "There's a table with just phones charging on them, right? If if anyone, no one's stealing phones. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Even like, when the oh, waiter, yeah. when the waiter was looking." for the phones mm -hmm. he was like oh is this your phone they're just phones on tables all around the yeah. bar there was so there was actually a charging just, station like he lost bar. it he just yeah. lost it like, yeah. it fell out of his pocket so it's like his immediate thought is it's yeah. big yes. pocket like but someone must have stolen just it just like it fell out of his pocket do people steal phones is that a thing still? Um, I feel like phones I, are worth nothing. At now. least in Canada, they don't, because I know that there's like a thing with the carriers that they blacklist. Mm, they're them, locked. Okay. Right, but they, yeah. Can, yeah. they can bring it to the US and sell it. Like it just won't work. That's a Canada. lot of effort to just sell. No, like yeah. people just kind of, people just. They just don't. If people I aren't stealing stop. bikes off the side of the road, I don't think they're stealing phones. Apparently people have said bikes are some of the only things stolen here. Yeah. And, and umbrellas probably, too. People probably don't necessarily completely steal them. It's like, let's, let's say, cause we've seen bikes here. Yeah. Let's say you're just kind of like not a nice person. You, you can grab that bike or I'm just going to 7-Eleven. I'm going to borrow this bike. I kind of wish I could do yeah. that. You go oh, and I could it. just go and take it back. And like, that's uh, like, you, you're just borrowing it without permission. Yeah. It's like, it's still illegal, <laughs> but it's like, I feel like people, I've had that done around Montreal. Somebody, I think it was my friend. Someone went in his garage. I remember as a kid stole his bike yeah and he was super upset because we were like 12 and he's like i can't afford a new bike and it just but then shows two up two days later a better bike was there what <laughs> the guy must have stolen somebody else's bike and, and brought it back with, with interest he replaced it what and my friend was like this is straight up an upgrade so he didn't report it wait <laughs> did you but it then sounds as, like your friend may have stolen someone else's bike. No, but then as, I, think, yeah. I think as he biked around with that bike, the guy whose bike it was saw him and went, hey, that's my bike. <laughs> Kicked the shit out of him. <laughs> I think he actually gave it back to him and then he had no bike. Uh, well. <laughs> uh, some, easy, someone come, gave this go. to me. They parked it. In my garage. <laughs> Some guys just want to see the world burn, I guess. Like, that bike thief is just pure chaos. <laughs> like, why would some you break back shit. in yeah. to put it like He, like, breaks in and steals someone's bike and swaps it with another person's bike so <laughs> yeah. they see each other riding each other's bike. No, yeah. He didn't, like, yeah. But it's like he didn't fully, it's like two days later. He must have stolen somebody else's then. He's just like, you know what? Why would he put it back? That's so weird. He must have, li I don't know. It's weird. Like, Maybe he just always steals bikes and he got I confused feel like with whose bike he has to return. <laughs> yeah. There's got to be more to this story. It doesn't make any sense. We were, sense. like, 12 or 13 and we were just confused. Because we all we did was bike around. So my friend was like, I can't like hang out as much anymore. Like it was really bad. Then he, he calls me. He's like, I'm good to go. I'm like, you got a bike? He goes, I don't know how. But yeah. What? 
That sounds like a story I'd tell my mom if I stole somebody's bike and there was a new bike in the garage. I mean, maybe he did. I, I never, I, he seemed genuine at the time. What we need here is like little scooters, like a little electric scooter yes. or something. Not even just a Razor scooter. I think a Razor might be a little bit, like you need bigger tires, I think. Cause, yes. Because Razor yeah. scooters are a pretty horrible But experience. I don't think you're allowed to ride them here. I love whatever the Wait, Pizza Hut electric. delivery vehicles are. They're yes. not, they're not scooters. The three wheel. Yeah. It's like, it's like a weird, like they can do a weird lean. The wheelbase is like. Like yeah, the wheels. Inches. Yeah, but it can like it can take corners. Yeah, because the wheels kind of came. Yeah, as you yeah. Turn. It, it makes like it so that the the vehicle tilts, so the pizzas all the force is going perpendicular, <laughs> so they don't slide. That's so you. awesome. Is that actually why? No, I don't know. Oh, okay. <laughs> I mean, it would, cool it, it, would, it would work like that though. It would if they are going around a turn. It would actually help to keep them from like. I I I'm jealous of those the delivery guys. I think they have the sweetest vehicles around. Oh, yeah. oh that and the tiny little trucks. Oh my god, there's yes. one parked outside right now. No, it's like actually, it's it's like Wait, a box. Wait, can we truck. see it from the window? Uh, yeah, it's right here. It's right. Uh, I'll just you see the back here. of it. It looks like a trailer, but it's actually a full blown wow. truck. Oh my god, that's what? so tall. Yes. It looks like a little box. Uh, it is. And on the front I of it is just a truck. Oh, I wish we could see the front of it from here. It's probably like a perfect cube. Yeah, because there's some really weird like size restrictions on vehicles, so you get stuff I, that looks like that. I just think, yeah, everything's so Space small. Efficient. Here. Yeah, it makes me kind of like envious of how like scary roads in the states are. With how like everyone's got it's like a what what attrition war of attrition. Everyone just gets a bigger and bigger yeah. and bigger and bigger and bigger vehicle, so that you can't kill me if you hit me with your car. Yeah, for oh, your sixteenth like, birthday. Uh, like mad mutually assured. Yeah, or yeah, like, mutually assured destruction. Like. <laughs> It's, it's like kids or parents get their kids the biggest truck yes. they can find because it's safe. Yeah. If the kids yeah, get in the car, and then the kid and gets drunk, and, yeah, and they then plow you through a, a minivan. Yeah. yeah, it's like <laughs> just cut it right in half. Because <laughs> it's just like every like half the vehicles here are actually just like microscopic compared to American cars. Like the wheel, like if, it's like twelve inch wheels. Yes, like, like really? tiny little wheels. Yeah, like a minivan mean. here is a ginormous vehicle. We've yeah. seen a few of them. Yeah. Well, like, we've like taxis too. Yeah, the van taxis. But in general, when we walked around some of the neighborhoods, you'd see like randomly just a gigantic vehicle. Yeah. Because they're the, like, there's some American are vehicles here. Yeah, that's what I'm cars. saying. Like European slash American vehicles. Yeah. I just, I wish there's something really kind of fun about getting in like a little tiny vehicle to go around town because you don't really need it. Like, how many people here are driving, you know, four hours? Like, right, right. No one's doing Not, crazy commutes. Yeah. It's just like little, you know, inner city spurts. I, I just yeah. want to have a little Pizza Hut squad. Yeah, we all pizza, have, we all have pizza one pizza of the pizza. pizza Hut delivery vehicles. <laughs> yeah, cool. Each one, each person has a different pizza brand. I've seen those for sale in <laughs> really? America. Yeah, those are like you can get those pretty easily. They're like, like the cars are like the size of like a mail delivery truck in America. Yeah, mm, think, yeah, like, it's kind of a here? similar a shape too. Yeah. It's like very. Oh, it's just it's very very tiny but practical. But also you wouldn't want to be on the freeway for a long time. But know? why? That's what I wonder. Like, why are the mail delivery trucks in the U.S. so small? I think and they're cute? like leftover from the war or something, or they were just really. It was like a really easy thing to make. I feel no, like I've seen new trucks and they just make them the same. I think they were engineered specifically for USPS. Yeah, I think so too, but they're super bare bones. It was just because... But they're made to be like indestructible and super like high lifespan. Mm. So oh, yeah? they don't, because yeah. they're going to be driving so many miles. They're like, you mm. know, normal car, you know, when it starts reaching like 200,000 miles, like that's kind of a piece of shit car at that mm. point. Oh, but, maybe they're just made to be super serviceable too. Yes, exactly. They're yeah. meant to be like super robust, like industrial vehicles. Um, but... The size maybe has to do with like the fact that if it was any bigger, it wouldn't really make sense if we're like like typical mail delivery. Like, yeah, because they each have their routes. They only right a exactly. Certain area. And the, the route can only be so big, and so if you have too big of a vehicle, then right. Because at a certain point, route. if your route it doesn't matter how big your your van is, you're not going to be able to actually physically reach mm. everyone in a day. Right, right. So I don't know. It's just probably an interesting story. Behind the whole thing. What, yeah. the mail trucks? Yeah. Probably. Bet, yeah. yeah, it'd be really cool. Everything's probably with an arm reach back there, too. <laughs> you know, you don't have to get up at yeah. every house and go into the back and get something. We'll, like, we'll get a comment right from someone who's been <laughs> like engi yeah. an engineer for the mail like, service for like 10 like, years. Everything they I don't know. Do they have well, Amazon here? Every single fucking thing that we've just I've never seen like an Amazon vehicle. I hate that split audio. And even the garbage trucks are tiny. They're like little pickup trucks or like little vans. They just take the garbage, throw it in the back of like a small van. And that's their garbage truck. 
every time it's a conversation too, where they everyone they debate whether it's a good thing or yeah. a bad thing. Yeah, yeah. I think I, I wonder how much they can actually that, pick up it's bad, but if it was better, it's, it's worse. I, I don't Something think it's like a lot. Yeah, I think it's just like right. a one or two blocks, but that's all they do because it's like a mail truck. If it they have their long, route. I think they would. And that, I don't know. Oh, right. they're talking I mean, about us talking. Yeah, yeah, so it's like now it's a meta conversation about each other. I think ten minutes is beyond the limit. I always try to make it stop. And a minute. We're back. Yep. Here we go. Hey everyone. How you doing? I hate it so. Every time it happens, I just go silent. <laughs> like I just don't want to be part of this. What? Why if you not? if you hated the split audio, um, give us a thumbs up. If you <laughs> really liked it, give us a thumbs up also, and then we'll tally the votes at the end, and we'll mm -hmm. see mm -hmm. if we'll ever do it again. Or act right. yes. If you liked it, give subscribe. it a thumbs up and subscribe and if you dislike it also like the video and subscribe yeah and share and we'll see which side had, yes. had the most yes <laughs> you know for the longest time i've been i've been looking at like just weird vehicles i'm always just. like browsing or like looking at like the government auction sites like mm -hmm. i think it'd be really fun to buy a mail truck like an old mail truck and just have that as like a little shitty car to drive around mm. no <laughs> no what i think that's like the the most impractical weird vehicle oh, you can no. buy. Oh, no. Wienermobile. Wienermobile. Oh, there was the whole Wienermobile no. debacle. Year, a That's a white years elephant ago. vehicle. <laughs> you do not You do not want a Wienermobile. Why not? I, what kind of extra... It's just shaped like a Wiener. It's not actually... So my, like, my dad used to work at the LA Times, and there was, I think in Santa Barbara, he did a story. He was a photographer, and he uh -huh. was... They were doing a story on the company that, like, makes some of those vehicles, and I went with him, and... It's like it's not a good vehicle. It's like it's like imagine a car mixed with like a theme park. <laughs> That's exactly gonna, what I, I thought you were gonna say. Hot dog. <laughs> imagine a car mixed with a hot dog. <laughs> I don't think anyone ever thought those vehicles were good. It's just like a motorhome. It's yeah, literally a motorhome. I mean, that just sounds good. Is there anything cool on the inside of them? Yeah, is it empty space? Is it in like a wiener? Museum? Or is it, uh, in wiener? I think that it's probably a lot shittier on the inside than you would uh. expect. But I do think it is functional. Mm. It's just... I it's, think it's like, exactly what I'd like expect. For like the, I think they did a peanut mobile as well, Mr. Mm. Peanut. And... Um, there's got to just be a bunch of empty space for like the fiberglass shells. Like, yeah, you know, what are yeah. you going to do? Make round walls on the inside? Like, no one sees the inside. Like, that's just a box to keep peanuts for your trade shows that you go to. I want to see the inside of a Wienermobile. I think the Wienermobile, I, I feel like, would probably be pretty nice. It's kind yeah, of like the most Wienermobile. living. What do you call a car? That's like what it that? looks like on the inside. What? what? I don't know. I'm just, we're going to do an overlay right here. What it looks like on the inside. Oh, yeah. we have a cross section so that the audience will know, but we don't know. Yeah. Man, I wish I was watching this right now so I knew <laughs> what the inside of a Wienermobile looked like. But there was like a hoax where someone listed it for sale. Oh, but it was fake. That? But it yeah, was fake, yeah. 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 Do they, yeah, like, is it that people just own them and they don't want to sell them? Mm, I do they don't like... think anybody owns them, I think. <laughs> they probably destroy it. I don't think you would what? want. You wouldn't. <laughs> do no, they make if, new ones? They were, you would not want somebody to own your <laughs> old Wiener like the, the, <laughs> the, the army with like a Black Hawk helicopter. Yeah. Like if it goes down, they have to destroy it yeah. so the enemy doesn't get the blueprints. <laughs> but it's a never. Wiener Mobile. Just imagine, <laughs> imagine like the, the marketing, the PR team at Oscar Mayer panicking when like someone takes a Wiener Mobile and just makes it look horrific or it just like is decaying over time. Like you don't want those pictures out there. You don't want the imagery of your, your precious Wiener Mobile oh, yeah. like rotting on you, the side of a want, highway. You don't want ISIS to get there. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you the Toyota turret wiener mobile. Like, dun, like the, dun, dun, dun. the the top of the wiener the top, opens and up and like a missile <laughs> shoots out. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> I actually really like that idea. Yeah. <laughs> could we make our own wiener mobile? Uh, I, I think we should could. make a Mista Hamburger. Mista Hamburger mobile. Ooh, yeah. The Hamburger. aspect ratio is wrong. It wouldn't fit on the road. <laughs> I think this would make it even funnier. Imagine a car with a really short wheelbase would be very like squirrely. <laughs> <laughs> you try to like get off on the off you ramp and then you just like <laughs> flopping around. You know what? A mail truck would be the perfect platform for that. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, why, what's wrong with a mail truck? I would like to buy a mail truck. I just don't think, I mean, it's weird, but it's just, it's kind too, it's not, basic it's, weird. Yeah, that's what I agree. Basic weird. Yeah. What, what else is there? There's like, there's too many of them for it to be unique. It's like, it's almost not even weird. It's like, they'll just think you're delivering the mail when you're driving. Oh, that's cool. I think that's cool. <laughs> I want a tiny little weird car. Or I would, I could buy one of these Japanese trucks. That would be cool. I don't know how, how you would do that. It's a, I've seen them on Facebook Marketplace, Daihatsu. Wait, 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 we have information. Oh. 
huge news. Huge news? What's the news, Ian? Just recently, recently, they listed the Wienermobile on Airbnb. And you can stay they listed wait, the Wienermobile on Airbnb. Wait, I didn't know you could stay wait, wait, okay. in there. So, what, well, wait, no, no, but that's not the original. Is there a bed in the back of the Wienermobile? Yeah. So it's like an RV. Oh my God! Oh, it's, it's just big in the, in the that's, inside. Wow, but, but it's like a whole wiener. That's a different bed. type of wiener mobile, I big. think. Is wait, is that like no, specially no, made it. for this, or is this the actual like a legit? Is the actual Oscar Mayer oh. oh my oh. God! Whoa, wow. that actually looks pretty nice in there. I feel how like... much? How much is it? One hundred thirty-six a night. Where, where is it? A though? night? We can where totally do that. Wait, can we book something before this goes up? It's in Illinois. Hey, can we I, Chicago can trip? Can we? I was thinking of going to Illinois this fall anyhow. It's just booked it's up. Sold out through through can when? We... Through the next year and a half. Oh my oh. god! No, it's Dude, like, that wiener mobile like is getting blockbuster. used and abused every night for the next two years. You're gonna have to. You're you gonna imagine? be the most sour wiener mobile by you, the time. What do they call it? The Mile opening. High Club. What do they call the wiener mobile? The Wiener High Club. <laughs> <laughs> the Wiener Club. <laughs> How much do you think it would cost to track one of these people down and buy them out of their slot for the Wienermobile yeah. within the next year? You always have to offer. I think that we should send that an more. email. Or Oscar Meyer, I know, watches this podcast. <laughs> Mr. Oscar Meyer. <laughs> Mr. Oscar himself. <laughs> Oscar Meyer and Justin Roiland watch mm. the podcast together. So we're going to yeah, get did Justin ever We're going to get respond? Nigel onto Rick yeah, and Morty. I've, I've talked back and forth with him. I don't no, know but he, when he watched the podcast. Oh, I forgot to ask him. <laughs> he doesn't watch the podcast. <laughs> <laughs> I never, Mr. Oscar Meyer does. I just never ask. <laughs> I think that there's definitely a way we could convince them to let us drive around the Oscar Wiener, the Oscar Meyer Wiener mobile for a week. Can you drive it if you rent it and sleep in it, or do you just have to sit there? I think it's just parked there. How fast do you think it goes? <laughs> At least thirty miles. We an hour. definitely have made vehicles work in the past without keys. I cannot imagine we wouldn't be able to figure out how to make the Oscar. <laughs> My wiener will be able to work. Get my phone right there. You know what? Wait, I'm we gonna, just admit I'm gonna, to a crime. I'm, I'm gonna sit this uh, this trip out. Oh, uh, Nigel. So the cars that this company was making when my when the LA Times did the story on it was oh. it was like the uh, wild thornberries. <laughs> they were making the like the camper from the wild thornberries, uh -huh. and then I think the other one was it was like I want to say this was a long time ago. It was like Advantage, like a like flea medication. What I I think it oh, was, was some, like a giant flea or something. Uh, I don't remember. There was there was a second thing there, and then I think they had just done it. maybe the peanut mobile was there. Or they they were talking about. It. I don't really remember, um, but I think it's just like a truck chassis or like an RV chassis. Look at that. That's in Florida. A fiberglass shell around. That's you can buy oh, yeah. seventy five hundred yeah. in Florida. The hats. There's in. a bunch of them. High jet. There's great. even ones where the the truck bed can dump out oh my or God. lift up like yes. the truck bed can go up like i want one Dude, six feet this is amazing i want this little truck these japanese trucks are actually like you can the frame rails are exposed like the cars are so small they don't even put siding on them you can <laughs> just see the frame of the car it's efficient i like, mean you don't need anything i want I a daihatsu these, rocky two of these parked side by side i'm pretty sure is like still narrower than a, an american what? hummer no yeah yeah i pre i think how wide are they no, the two. Oh, I I say two side tiny. by side. Hmm? Like the look at the cab of this one. It's so tiny. They're tiny, on the inside. Yeah, but like two side by side is probably like a the Hummer side? plus like fifty percent. Mm. I'd buy one point five. I half half yeah. a lane. There's no way that's half a lane wide. I'd say like seventy five percent of a lane. I think that everybody needs smaller cars because they're more fun. Yeah. And they get better gas mileage. Yeah. And and you and if I, you crash and if you crash, everybody gets hurt. But then how are you <laughs> how are you supposed to compensate for your little penis? I don't know, big tires maybe? Ah, uh, big tires. Just big get tires. a little car with big tires on it. God, I hope we I've get... seen one of those. It looked really cool. Did? <laughs> yeah. Yes. I hope you we look... get some kind of comment from someone like, oh, I, I haul giant logs for a living. I could never make do with one of those tiny little pussy mobiles. <laughs> <laughs> well, then use a big truck. Jesus Christ. It's easy. <laughs> <laughs> we we solved we solved it. Okay, wait, good go team. <laughs> That's why I feel like every time every time someone comes in to justify the uh, why they need a giant car. Mm -hmm. What do they call it in America? The Highway Queens, right? Is that what they're is called? That a, is that a pavement car? princess? Pavement princess. Yeah. Pavement princess. Yeah. I've yeah. never heard of I've that never before. Heard of that so a pavement princess That's is a is like an off roading truck. 
Mm -hmm. which only drives on asphalt. Oh, or see, or they I call see, it a mall crawler. Mall crawler. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like like the aesthetic is this jack up off road, road like a, like capable a big like right. four wheel drive jeep or something, yes. but just never leaves the road. But yeah. yeah, and if you like, you can you can always tell. Because my my we used to have a, an old four x four nineteen eighty five Toyota pickup truck mm -hmm. that was jacked up and had big tires for off roading and you can always tell the the pavement princess from like an actual four x four. One of the main vehicle. giveaways is the thin profiled tires. Yeah, like mm. that you couldn't get anywhere really with that. Right. You really want the really thick walled tires right. with tiny rims and like the the mm. equipment they carry. So it's like if you see somebody with like a very tall jack mounted to the top, yeah, they like probably the high probably actually go off-roading maybe that yeah is, they're, they're more fun. likely to the nicer the truck i think the less likely they are like, to actually like how clean it is too yeah. right like if yeah. it's just pristine yeah. they might have just gotten a car wash but probably not <sighs> so what is that is that just like for the aesthetic is it's that just for aesthetic. like yeah it's yeah. just to be scary i guess there's, there's playing like, off-roaders basically yes. yeah because if you if you're gonna do off-roading like you probably want an older shitty car <laughs> yeah like you don't go and spend like some of these look like you know the truck itself is like probably 60 70 thousand dollars yeah and then they like easily you can spend another 60 70 thousand dollars um, off-road equipment yes, and like, like lifts and all insane. sorts of suspension you, and tires have to mo actually modify the suspension with like huge the, the, the and like the, the bull bar up front yeah. with like winches on the front and yes. the back yeah yeah it's like you want a dumpy old like toyota pickup truck yeah you want like, a light truck with big yes. wheels on it yeah because I remember, like, a Jeep like or something. I loved driving that truck around because you had uh, you had a secondary gearbox. Hmm. The differential was locked on the back permanently, though, which was kind of a nightmare. So, like, going around corners sucked because <laughs> it would just, like, the car, like, it did, it just would always yeah. squeal because, the you know, the outside is oh, wider yeah. than yeah, the yeah. inside. But you could literally go anywhere in that truck. It was amazing. Hmm. I, I drive a Prius C, so I don't, I don't know a lot about driving off the road. Actually, no, your, your there was car, this one time. Alan, your car barely drives on the road. There was this one. I, we met, me and Jake Laser measured it one time. It was mm. 0 to 60 in 12.85 seconds. Under 13. Pretty good. That's pretty, pretty good. good. But That's there was this one time, um, me and uh, James Hobson, the hacksmith, we were trying to drive to his, um, like, he, he had a contact with, like, jetpacks, jetpack mm. aviation. And they, like... They had sent him specific instructions how to get there because kind of it was near where um, your friend was where we visited for Alex's video. Okay. So it's like there's like a lot of mountainous roads. There's a lot of like uh, you can get yourself oh, yeah. in trouble there if you're mm. not on the right road. So they sent very specific instructions to James on how to get there, which he forgot that he ever received. And so instead we did the exact thing they told us not to, which was we yes, followed Google yes, Maps. Uh, yes, so yes. I'm in my Prius C. And at one point <laughs> we're like, it is a dirt road. It looks like it's in the middle of the farm. And at one point, we went down a hill that was so steep. I was like, okay, this better get there because I can't actually go back. I, I, yeah, you like, there's I can no see way. the grade of this. Yeah, I know I can go it. down this way. Yeah. It's going to be scary. But if we have to turn around, I physically am not going to be able to get back up there. Yeah. <laughs> but so this of, better be able, this better was it get it? It was, it was. But, but, but we had to back? we had to like break open a gate. It was like some farmer's gate. It's like do not open. It oh, was, so you went through someone else's property or something? I think. But so it was it was locked. But yeah. it was it was locked and one but of the it wasn't strong enough that it could stop a Prius from just plowing <laughs> yeah. through no, it's the even, it's, gate. It was even better than that. It was locked with a chain to uh, it was like the gate and then a post and then there was a chain locked around it. Yeah. But the post wasn't sealed in the ground anyway. So we lifted the <laughs> oh. post out of the fucking ground, opened the gate, drove through and just drove it back in and put the chain back on it. <laughs> wow. Well, that's like the the TSA. <laughs> Security theater. So I mean, we we got there and we showed up my pre which is like covered in dirt at that point, mud and dirt, and the guys were just looking. They were like, "Why did you go that way?" <laughs> <laughs> we sent you instructions. And James was like, "Oh, that's right. They sent me an email." You know, I was like, it, "James, you, you owe me a new car." YouTubers, or I just say content creators in general, are literally the worst at following instructions and staying on top of things it is genuinely embarrassing yeah it's like it's awful. you can give everybody all the information they could possibly need to do something and they will still screw it up i, I don't yes. understand it it's like everyone has a squirrel brain yes i don't know if it's because of youtube or that's just sort of what makes you successful i, I, on the I think it's because of youtube i think yeah. i think youtube I don't think causes so. brain damage. no i think it's the other way i think I, only or their squirrel brains people become with yeah. brain damage yeah. yeah that and i also think that as youtubers we get so much like we're assaulted with so much yeah. stuff all the time. You kind of tune out everything, even the important parts. <laughs> it's like when you open a web page yeah. and you just click like 
X and you click out of it and then you're like, wait, what, what's the next step in this process? <laughs> Because it was like you, you just, just click, have ADHD you just brain. click click yes or no on everything that pops up, and then you realized you clicked no on something that you should have clicked yes on. That's that's like what it's like. And you to just be unplug me. your computer and go outside and touch grass. <laughs> it's like when you're in the in the Seven Eleven, you just say hi hi hi, 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 and they ask yeah. you if you want the revol- the special revolver yeah. that no one ever <laughs> says yes to, and you say yes. Would you like to it? donate a hundred dollars to charity? <laughs> hi. Uh, yeah. Why is everything so expensive here? <laughs> Conversion rate sucks. <laughs> they have this ten thousand yen tax. That they keep sticking on to everything I buy. Dude, Twitch streamers are even worse though. Really? Yeah. I think it's just from because, like you say, is it from YouTube or is it like did we start that this way? I feel like Twitch is both. But Twitch I'm, is like because you almost like when you are making content, like you're always doing it, like it doesn't stop. It just like I think it rots all their brains. But I think YouTube yeah. kind of does the same thing. Where it's like you're, you're, when you just started, it was just you doing like a hobby thing. Yeah. Like as it builds, it's like you're now scheduling videos. You have to plan for a lot of stuff. And it's like, I find that you're kind of always, there's too much information coming in. And like Kevin said, you just learn to be like, okay, this stuff is not important. I'll tune it out. But then sometimes you, it, it is important. <laughs> or it's like, this isn't important right now. So I'll put it off. And then you just forget that you put it off. Yes. And it is. I live my life like, two days at a time maybe one it's hour like, at a time it's, yeah. if there's anything really important it's like i try to pawn it off yeah. on somebody else where it's like i <laughs> literally okay. cannot think about yeah. whatever i'm doing right now like that's right in front of me and something that's trying mm. to be planned so even for this trip it's it was like like all i can focus on is you know doing whatever like any of the tax stuff or other bull crap i was doing mm-hmm. back at the house which even then is its own nightmare because it's like it's so spread apart over multiple days where it's like i just like just put something in front of me and i'll just work on it till it's done mm-hmm. but i can't like constantly jump around and so i feel like a lot of i think most people are kind of the same way but maybe it's just this specific job because there's always so many different things well, i think it's a filter i think it's a it's, great filter yeah i think it's a great filter that only lets the most squirrel brain i think so through. too i really I, I think at least from my own experience it's just that like as you i i feel like i talked to my brother about this who i work with it's just like you always you never stop at 80 percent of your capacity you always go to like 120 mm. percent. yeah so it's just like you're everything just there's always stuff falling through the cracks yeah. So you're never on top of it. Like in the moment you there's a break and you're like, wow, I have so much time. You're like, I'll start a new project. And then you just go back to like too much information. Yeah. I am always opening doors. That, that's what I'm trying to I'm say. I'm literally yeah, like, just, doors are open. If I see a door, I open it. And that's if I ever go into the room. <laughs> so, uh, like, like, you can't stop me from opening the door. Though. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like, oh, you, you know, you message somebody and hit them up. You're like, oh, you know, like mm. I'm, we're going to be in Japan. Oh, blah, my blah, God. Blah. Yeah. And then suddenly oh, you're like, no. right. And then so- you have. You have a thousand people that you've like promised to spend yeah, time I with. So, I have so many messages like that left on red because it's just, oh God, it's embarrassing. I do genuine or generally I do make it work, but like you do your best, but it starts to actually become stressful because, and yeah, because you're just like, oh God, <laughs> there's so but many. Like yesterday I, I had hit up that, uh, I can't remember his name. He, he made oh, this no. really cool, like, um. Well, it's it's he's Japanese, and, um, but even if it was an American name, I wouldn't be able to remember it. Cause his name is just, uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, be but he's he does like a lot of technology stuff, and he's like a very kind of small creator. But he's got mm. he I showed you the the presentation yeah. box. It's like this crazy presentation box that has like two thousand parts, and it just like um, it's a really funny short video of this like really fancy box that kind of anime like, like a robot smoke gonna come out, like pours smoke, out of it. These little lights come out to like shine it. It's just like a like a sushi lunchbox. Like, like, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> gas station sushi comes out of it. That's, that's like cool. I had I you know sort of went through people that followed me on Twitter trying to figure out like who I knew that was like a creator in mm-hmm. Japan that I could talk to, and he was one of them. And you know we've been trying to figure out a time to hang out, but like we've been doing so much stuff that it's really hard. And right. there's also so many people that it's like really difficult to try to find time to go yeah, and do it's something. It's a big group. Oh, it's, yeah. it's a very yeah. big group. Um, but it like worked out perfectly yesterday where I couldn't get tickets to the museum. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so I went and had lunch with him and he happened to be in the same area. And so it was like, open the door and then it worked out. <laughs> <laughs> nice. That was a room that you actually yeah. stepped into. Yeah. <laughs> um, Meanwhile, there's a hundred other doors that are open around yeah. you with people just like well, yes. dogs and animals starving to death yes. inside them because you haven't attended to them. I kind of like, yes. <laughs> at least for I, me. I, I, at least for me like one thing i had to train myself was to not do that like just start things because i found that like 
even if you, I don't know, just, just starting it, you start getting stressed that now you're not working on it or you're not putting time and effort into it. But, but you could like, distract yourself by opening more doors. No, but that's what I'm trying to say is you go, okay, okay, it's too much work. And like you said, you're like, oh, it's easy to open this door. I've learned that that is just, you just, you'll just have infinity like stressed. You have to just be mm -hmm. like, you know what? Like that's a door I'm just not even gonna. Do you think it's the same with. here for like, like, like streamers or esports or like, you think there's anything different about like the Japanese meta for like people who do that sort of thing here? I like, think there is. I think that they're like a lot, they're considered to be more of a traditional celebrity in um, a way. Or at least like they, think they're they, they view, they view more themselves brain. as more of a traditional celebrity. But are they more or less? They're probably just a squirrel brain <laughs> as us. But there's just like one person in between you and them. Like a manager or something. Mm. Like I don't know if they do personal relationship stuff like that. Because there's not a whole lot of like successful creators here that I'm aware of. And mm. so I don't think that there's a whole bunch of networking right because even like trash taste there they came here they're not like from yeah here. i and think one one joey i think was raised here uh, he, has a, okay, he said okay. he has a japanese passport mm. okay okay well you don't have to be raised here to have it no i think he's australian but i think he partially grew up here at least i could be completely wrong i'm sorry joey <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think part of it might even just be like specifically about sort of like like trying to make content where you're like building something or making something. There's just like it's just not as much like space here generally. Like like yeah. if you're a kid yeah. and you want to like you know be mm. be setting off rockets or blowing stuff up, well, you couldn't really. There's nowhere you could do that. Well, here. like I know that um, for Cam, I just couldn't do it here. Right, right. Like some why? I think they're just very restrictive on the chemicals. Like you just they you just can't own acid. Probably you need to like justify a lot of stuff you can make acid and that might be a crime See, this is why know. nobody's invented helicopter two <laughs> wait what too many rules sequel, everyone's everyone the sequel, sequel that the sequel to helicopters <laughs> everyone's too afraid of of getting hurt or somehow <laughs> selling something that was used to make drugs what in your mind is helicopter yeah, two? I, know, I, dude, I don't know you, 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 have you, it yet. are you telling me you haven't heard will's helicopter two stories <laughs> no, yet I you haven't no heard the helicopter two rant <laughs> if you love two. helicopter one you're gonna lose your goddamn <laughs> mind for helicopter, helicopter 2.0 it's the what? next advancement of helicopter. Do you, know, you don't even know what because they're too afraid to build it. Is does is does it hover? Or is it just a different? We don't know. We don't know. We so don't know. We so if you buy know. a helicopter, a new helicopter, it's going to have a motor that was designed okay. seventy years do you, ago. Do you, yeah. Do you want to do you want to learn about helicopters? I don't know how much. How, how much have I talked about the helicopter stuff that I did? Uh, I, on the podcast, not. I don't know. Okay, so over in over real the life, past a lot, year, a lot in real life. Wait, over the how, past year, how, I, how much time do we have left? Oh, okay. we can talk this, about helicopters. This is a good. This is good. Right. Yeah, um, gonna lay it on us. I two. took helicopter lessons because in, in a was, helicopter one. In helicopter yeah, one. In the first one. <laughs> and I, because I've always like had a hard on for helicopters ever since I was a little kid. I had a little kid hard on for helicopters. Oh, no. And uh, and then I was one day thinking to myself like, I don't, fuck it, <laughs> let's go fly a helicopter. And so I did. <laughs> And you got to fly a helicopter on your first lesson. They just yeah, handed you, do. you the they, controls. They hand you the controls. So the guy yeah. that, that uh, runs the school uh, has like 18,000 hours in a helicopter, which is like three years. Like Straight. ass planted in a seat three Jeez. years wow. flying a helicopter. It is insane. Eight hours a day, that would be nine years. Yeah. Straight sitting. It's a shit ton of hours. Yeah. And uh, he, you basically, you, you go in. And you, you ever seen this episode of South Park where Mr. Garrison makes the, the one wheel thing? Oh, oh yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> the beats flying. And, and it, it, that's what it feels like. You're just like, <laughs> there's, there's three things you have to do. You have your, uh, your tail rotor. You have your uh, like pitch yaw. And you have your throttle. And so you're balancing everything at the same time. And like a lot of it's automated, but you basically have, you have to like, it, it's I don't know, it's hard to describe. Imagine like if you learn how to drive a stick shift. Imagine learning to drive a stick shift, stick shift, but there's two clutches. It's like an additional mechanic mm. that you have to pay attention to constantly, constantly, <laughs> for the most part. Like mm. Once you're moving forwards, it's fine. It's not a big deal because the rotor acts as like a wing, and so you you just it starts flying like an airplane. It becomes very stable. 
Didn't you get didn't you get into a whole thing with Peter yeah, Schiefel over yeah, whether or not you could say like an airplane? Yeah. <laughs> I still stand like, and this is coming. That might have been the last podcast he was on. <laughs> Bro. Because it literally it flies we never it flies again. very similarly. Like you you just you want to go forward, you want to go down, up. It just it, it's like an airplane. It's very similar. He's mm. he's he's like developing a rash right now. Just you saying yeah. these words, like Peter's like getting itchy and he doesn't know why. <laughs> When you slow down, it becomes much more complicated <laughs> because you have to be constantly balancing. When you're going forwards, you don't have to balance. It just mm. sort of self-stabilizes. Mm. But anything like when, you, when you're sort of like under 50 knots, I think, or 50 miles an hour, um, once you start slowing down below that, it becomes a little bit more... It's kind of like a, what, balancing like a big stick on your hand. Yeah, basically. It turns in. Like once you're at a complete standstill, like you can feel it. Like it's very bizarre, but you enter like... I can't remember all the terminology, but like you essentially lose the wing effect, like the effective lift. And mm. it you like from you go from being super stable to all of a sudden just like constantly having to to fight it. Okay. All right, but helicopter yeah, too. Yeah. So helicopter no, no, no. too. You have to start so off here's, with the here's development of helicopter. What I learned one about to helicopter. Understand. Exactly. You, you have you have to yeah. learn about helicopter one first. <laughs> On Helicopter One, so this is the, the R44, the Robinson 44 that I learned on. I have like 15 hours. It's like not a lot of hours, but still, it's like a decent number of mm. hours. It's, it's just it's too It's easy. not nine years of eight hours no, a day. No, exactly. But, <laughs> yeah. but than man if there point. was an emergency, I could fly a helicopter. The landing would be maybe a little <laughs> rough, but I could fly a helicopter. Um, the landing is the hardest part. The engines on R44s are like ancient. And the mm. reason they're ancient is because... It works. Nobody's like, okay. why build something but new how, how, and risk everything? What's the motor like, like in an Apache or something? It's the same thing. It's going to be newer, like or like turbines or something. But they're like the design is the they, same. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think that they do not like you. You could take an engine from like a Honda Civic and stick it into a Robinson. <laughs> so the there's no helicopter too because you don't. We don't need a helicopter too. It I mean, works. No, but they're, they're afraid works. to make it. I'm not saying. Do we even need helicopter one? <laughs> Yeah, they're afraid. The, the <laughs> risk, helicopter the risk too. of developing a new helicopter, yes. isn't worth like the the efficiency gains. Go watch videos of how they made the original helicopter, and how a helicopter came into existence. It is you, they never do shit like this nowadays because well, no, they're afraid. Um, they, they just get in it. It's like they just, they get, just in get in it. it and they take off and the guy gets the, thrown it's out. Like, <laughs> it's, just, it's like all oh, over the Will. place. And There's the video you shared of the guy. It hits the ground. And yeah. the, the, and the guy, guy bounces up and into the blade. Oh, my yeah. God. Yeah. It's the wrong yeah. blade. Yeah. 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 But he gets up. They and say, yeah, they what? say he survived. Yeah, and he was <laughs> <laughs> he wasn't like the test pilot. You see the two halves. He made it, though. That's what they were willing to do for Helicopter 1. If that happened nowadays during the development of Helicopter 2, they would shut the entire program down. Program but down. Kevin, it's like chemistry. Like when you read the old chemistry books. Oh yeah, they'll it's be like, like it'll be like mercury, like this poison that you, you have to like wanna, climb like, over the dead bodies to continue the research. <laughs> well, like the nowadays, like it's so stringent all the research. But like back then, it'll be like whatever deadly poison. It'd be a description. Mm -hmm. It'd be like white powder, like whatever this odor tastes bitter, and you're like. Okay, and you realize the guy just took mm. a little bit, and, went, <laughs> and he's like, "Yeah, that's oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah, okay." I remember. Like, that's how, <laughs> that's like, horrifying. I think that's how, like, uh, like some drugs and everything were discovered because they would just make chemicals and be like, "I'll try a bit," and then it's like, "Oh wow, Dude. that really did something." To God me. bless yeah. scientists. So, w for helicopter two, is there any possibility it could be like electric? Like, what are the I, I had a like bunch of ideas. Motor. I looked into helicopter. electric motors, mm -hmm. and it turns no? out that batteries are too heavy. So the you know, like a lipo, like you could yeah. do it, but your it flight time would be like long. eight hours or really eight minutes bad. or something. Yeah. So there's a guy in Europe somewhere who made a, he took one of the mosquito helicopters, like these horrifying little DIY helicopters mm -hmm. and he converted it to electric. And I think he got like 15 minutes of flight time, but that's like and a traditional helicopter. I, like, yeah, I, start, I started scaling it up and it yeah. just gets worse and worse and worse mm -hmm. and worse. But so, what about, you know, a quad or a drone? Well, I looked into like a, like hydrogen fuel cell. Mm, right okay. so it's like you could store compressed hydrogen and mm. then you have an electric motor because if you take the electric motor if you take the 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 uh, internal combustion motor out you it's a shit ton of weight mm -hmm. like it's an insane amount of weight um 
and then you use an electric motor instead, which is significantly denser. <laughs> you know, you miss what you're doing. You're writing, you're writing fanfic for Helicopter Two. You're literally like a fan who loved the first <laughs> one so much, and he's, okay. they're not making a second. So you okay. start writing. There, your own there is, in, to there is Helicopter One. I feel like for it to be fanfic, there has to be some sort of sexual implication, and nowhere in my in my story is I anyone. There has to be. What? <laughs> And admit it. Continue. Is there not a little bit of <laughs> no? Continue of your with your vision of helicopter. Uh, yeah, too. A hydrogen it's a helicopter you can have sex with. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, it's like I'm just gonna come out and say it. <laughs> just, look, guys, I'm gonna cut to you. You, got, you really shoved me in a corner here. <laughs> he started off with you've seen know. that episode of South Park. <laughs> yeah, that is true. That and you're comparing it. Okay, that's. All, I made a spreadsheet. None of it made any sense. And then I stopped taking helicopter lessons. I haven't done one in like a year. How does that make you feel? No, it's fine. I, I I made not a decision, but I did something that I have always wanted to do. Mm. I enjoyed it a lot. And then I got bored with it. And, and now I don't spend money on it anymore. And so I'm saving a lot of money. <laughs> to be honest, I think just fl being able to land a helicopter is like good enough. Yes, that it's is. Like, there's that skill you need to just be okay at it. Landing is and the hardest like, part. Hovering and land. Well, I mean, it's landing is hovering. But, but I mean, like that is yeah. Like I would get in a helicopter. I can do anything in it. Yeah, they they tend to do this thing where you don't just take up off the ground. You like, you, like lift, lift up, and yeah. so like you have one point. So you always you always see them kind oh. of do like a this, and mm -hmm. then they come up. So you're on like the tip of mm -hmm. one of the skids. Mm -hmm. Why? Uh, it just naturally so that way you doesn't... can't like start this bouncing thing like a feedback no, loop yeah kind of i think it's like it's the the safest way to sort of like interface with the ground and mm -hmm. to leave the ground otherwise you might end up like hitting or bouncing it's very it is extremely difficult and anyone who can do it well is very impressive in my book hmm Shout out to all the helicopter pilots. But you guys, you guys, you should do it. You should. If you haven't done it, you should. Hundred. I know when you were doing it, I was like, lesson, do I was it. Looking it up. Do it. Do it. It's like it'll probably be like five or six hundred bucks. It mm. will be the absolutely worth the money, the best money you've ever spent. I feel like because I was it get is really sweaty. It is, yes, dude. <laughs> I, when I was done, I was toasted. It was an, a fantastic experience. Do it once. You don't have to do it more than once. You have to do it once. I hundred percent do it once. If you have any interest, do it. Like if you ever have five hundred bucks saved up, just. Take take the lesson. Yes. Give it to a helicopter. Wait, yeah. yeah, just five, give it. You spent so long saving up five hundred dollars, and you get one hour I of a think, lesson. I think it is money well spent. Mm. Very well spent. Helicopter escort. This video is sponsored by <laughs> by Helicopter Two Point Yeah. <laughs> My graphic novel will be <laughs> released. <laughs> helicopter Two by William Osmond. Yeah. Uh, you have to be eighteen years old. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it comes out in the middle of September. <laughs> is there soon. is there such a thing as like a like a uh, I don't know what to call it like a vehicle persona? Like would you be a Ooh, helicopter? If yes, you... yes, <laughs> yes. I a hmm. what? Like if like the idea of a persona, but for vehicles. Okay. Oh, like F thirty five. Like if you're like like oh like I'm actually a helicopter when I have sex with people. <laughs> You obviously haven't spent enough time on the military subreddits. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> well, anyways. Um... Buy my graphic, my pornographic helicopter 2 novel. And, and uh, we'll see you next time. Yeah. <laughs>